Today I've got something special in store for you. We are diving deep into the enhancements of our PDC Extreme controller with Reactor 2.0. And this beast has always been about flexibility, but now with Reactor 2.0, it's taking the user experience to a whole new level. How? Let's dive in. Setting up your controller should be intuitive, and with Reactor 2.0, the speed and simplicity of customization are unmatched. In this case, I am starting out with the default configuration and look at the UI of Reactor. We have picked the PDC Extreme generic PDC control. I've added three cameras. It's very easy. You basically click this button and then you can search for devices on your network. You can add them manually. Or if you have them over here in the device collection, you can basically pick them already from this list. I have already done it for three cameras and we have numerous videos showing you how this is done. I've also added an ATEM switcher for tally forwarding and routing triggers. And let me just quickly tell you what that is. Routing trigger is when I press one of the camera select buttons on the PVC Extreme, you want something like a video router or the auxiliary on the ATEM switcher in this case to select that source on a screen for the PVC operator. That's what we call a routing trigger. So that would bring up input number one, input number two, input number three on that screen in front of the operator. In this case, I have actually let that routing trigger select the preview source on the ATEM switcher. You could also do that for an auxiliary or you could have it on a video hub or something else. But look at the configuration for routing triggers. We have different profiles and I just selected the route to preview in this case. All right, so that was the routing trigger. The tally forwarding is taking tally information from the ATEM switcher, which we know, and then forward to the camera. So the little LED on top of the camera lights up green or red, depending on whether the camera is on preview or program. You can see right now with the CRN500, which is camera number one, it doesn't have any light in that LED. But when I select the camera, immediately the LED on top of the camera lights up green and it would be red if I had it on program. And finally, to let the camera selector know which inputs they are on, if you go into the camera selector, I have also set it up with a tally forwarding configuration here. I have chosen number one, two, and three for the three cameras, assuming they are on input one, two, and three, and the same for the routing index. So this is really straightforward. I just quickly wanted to show you that this configuration is already in place and it's not the concern of this video. Over here, we have the devices, the ATEM switches connected and so on. What is of our concern is how can we expand this configuration? Because honestly, if you click around in it, you find there's a camera selector and then there's a menu. And when I change the menu, I see changes to the knobs up here. And I have a paging button that gives me access to additional menus. I have also um, a preset recall and store. I have a shift key. I have all kinds of things. And that is complex programming, guys. This is what we have done for you to get you started real quick out of the box with the PDC Extreme or any of our other controllers. How can you extend that? And we have made this wonderful concept in the configuration tab where basically you can add pages on top of this in what is called a user section. So let's just do that now so that essentially we are expanding our camera select row because we're not planning more than three cameras, but we have other cameras which are not PDC for input four, five and six. And I wanna put those on these buttons. So look at how easy this would be done. In the configuration tab of Reactor, what I will do is to um, select the three buttons down here that I want to turn into preview select buttons. So essentially this is already selecting preview for um, input number one, two, and three, because that's linked to the cameras. But then I want four, five, and six on the next three buttons. So we have this thing called a user section. So I make sure that I have that selected. That is usually the default. I'm also on the background and I'm in the normal shift state. So those can be important things to just check. But otherwise, I just drag across these buttons. And then in the inspector, I immediately get a chance to select behaviors for these buttons. So I will go down to my ATEM switcher and I will open up the program preview and select program preview select. So as I do that, I get into this dialog or this view of the inspector where I can now select the ME row that I want to select program uh, or preview for. So I'll select ME number one. And I'll also select 
uh, an input, basically. I'll just pick input number four. Now, I know this is uh, maybe a little bit weird to you guys because we don't want input four on all of these, but it has an explanation because I can now click the batch editor, place the cursor in the first field and press the plus one, and then the fields underneath will receive the value of the first, but just increased by the number one. And then immediately I now have a preview selector for input four, five, and six. You see, this is on my, my control. I, I can now try it, okay? So I select input number five for preview, number six, and the camera is over here. Probably if I pick this one as well, it's also on preview, but the red tally, because this is apparently on program, will dominate. All right, so that actually brings us into the next question. We want a cut button, right? So it's so easy. I'll just click this button next to, and I'll basically scroll down and... Um, you see in the transition section for the ASIM switch, I, I have a cut behavior. I can select this guy. Just like with the others, I need to specify which ME row I am working with. So this can be done in this dialog. I'll just pick ME number one. And there we have a cut button. Let's try it out. Cut. Yes, it works exactly as I wanted. So you see now I have put a little video switcher onto my PDC Extreme. Let's just quickly put an auto button inside here as well. So for having a nice automatic transition. Let's quickly select this one. And uh, the ME row is number one. There we go, we have auto. Yes, it makes a transition in one second. Perfect. What about making a shift level? What if I want these buttons, or even I could actually even take the camera selector into it. If I go to the shifted state, I could drag across these buttons here. And then over here, I can select program preview select. There we go. And now you see they are at first blank because I still need to assign the parameters like the ME row, select ME number one. Um, maybe I can go straight to the batch editor, but then I need to basically add the first input myself. I'll make this seven and then I'll use plus one to create the remaining five. And there you go. Let's try this out. Oh, I need a shift key, right? I also need a shift key, but I am currently in the shifted state. So if I go into simulation mode, I can still try to operate this. And yes, and I think on the ATEM constellation, we can see the shift is, is changing here. If I go back to normal state, we are back here and I can use my keys. So actually, really, the problem is that right now I don't have a shift key, so I need to use the UI on the computer to go between the normal and shifted state. But of course, I can easily change that as well. So you'll basically just go over here and then make this into a shift key. So let's do that. Let's just collapse a few things and then go to the navigation section where I can basically make a shift. Let's make it a hold down. I like that. So I'll just do shift hold down. Let's try this out. There we go. It actually works straight out of the box, basically. Uh, I feel like I want to put a, a color on this one. So just quickly, we can go into default feedback and assign a different color to it real quick. I like ice for my navigation. And there you see now I have a slightly different color on my shift key. The final thing I want to show you is that if you want to go beyond this, because this is like tweaking and using unused keys on your PDC Extreme easily to add additional functionality, you can also like overtake the full controller if you want. So let's just create a new page. And if we make this a non-transparent page, that means unchecking this one, it means the next page we get will essentially just blank out the whole controller as we select it. Let's try this overlay. I'll just make it a, a, a an overlay. So just see what happens. I can zoom out slightly here on my controller and we go to the overlay and you see the whole controller blanks out. And then I can go back here. So on that overlay, we could do stuff as well, right? So what I will do now is to select this whole row of buttons and make it into an auxiliary select for auxiliary number one. Okay, let's quickly do that. I'll just go down here, expand auxiliary output, auxiliary select. We'll do what we have done many times before now, basically start selecting auxiliary channel number one here. We'll just pick input number one. We'll go into the batch editor. We'll place the cursor in the first field, go to the plus one and press it 11 times. And there we now have an auxiliary select row to select input one, two, three, and so on for auxiliary number one, all the way up to 12. Once again, we are missing a navigation key. So I'll go to the background layer but then I have an available button down here. So I'll click this one, go to my navigation section, and I'll um, select 
go to page. So that would go to a different page. And once again, look at how easy this would be. I just need to select my overlay page. So let's just see if this works. Overlay, voila, there you go. We are now on the overlay page. And all I need to do is assign a similar navigation to get back to my background. So if I just want to follow what we just learned, I could basically make a background return key in this way by selecting page number one. And there you have it. So I can go forth and back between my overlay and my um, default control underneath, including, by the way, all the customizations we did to the camera select row. I'm sure this has opened up your imagination to how you could do wonderful things on top of the default configuration from Skyhawk. And this is really our dream to supply out of the box functionality for you guys, but also to provide easy, right at hand opportunities for expanding and growing with our controllers. As we wrap up, I would like to extend a heartfelt thanks to our ever growing community. Thanks for your passion and your feedback and your inspiring innovations. So please keep on reaching out to us. Please be a part of our Skahoy community and sign up for our newsletter on social media to get the hottest news from Skahoy. You can find us on X, formerly Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram.